Good morning, I'm Maurice Barrett and I've got another Life in Lockdown talk for you. Trust you've had a good sleep. Looking forward to today. I'm going to continue. Yesterday I talked about renewing your mind based on Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and I'm going to continue. But you know, Christians have been caught out around the world with this, this lockdown. I'm disturbed that that Christians have not anticipated and, and understood. Many of my Christian friends in ministry have told me for years, God's been saying, get prepared, get ready, be ready for God suddenly. And a suddenly has happened suddenly. We've had this lockdown and instead of thinking, this is God preparing us, they have completely missed it and they weren't ready for it. And it's it's really sad to me that the that the... God's been telling them to get ready and when something happens, they, they miss it. You know, God's ways are in the sea and when God says get ready, it's not for what we think it will be. That's why he's telling us to get ready, be prepared. God always does things differently than we would. So, you know, we're looking for revival and maybe God's bringing persecution or we're expecting persecution and in it God does revival. You've just got to be ready and alert for everything that happens and see God in it. Well, this lockdown's given those of eyes to see and ears to hear a little glimpse, a little window of what it'll be like when the one world government make everyone slaves. And it's, it's not a conspiracy theory. Revelation chapter 13, uh, the first and the second beast, you can see that this is what will happen. Well, I, I put a quote up on Facebook. Uh, I'm going through my uh, Babylon series. And I thought I would read it today. It's the part uh, I'm reading about Esther. And Haman thought that he'd go to annihilate all God's people. And so he's happy, he goes to his home to eat and to drink because he's issued the decree that on a certain day that all God's people will be annihilated. But then it says this, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. That was the capital. They didn't know what was going on. And I'll, I'll just read it for you. So I'm quoting now from my book. I wrote this uh, in 2012. I suggest you read the books because what I prophesied and what I said is happening now. Happening now. The city of Shushan was perplexed. This is my quote. The general public did not know what was happening and neither did those in the city where all the politicians were. This is always the case and although it did not make sense to them, no one seemed to protest. When the man of sin does the very same thing and makes legal documents to destroy or restrict God's people, the public will remain silent because they will have already been conditioned by the propaganda of the media. It's happened many times in history already for it not to be effective. And we can see in Babylon it worked. With Hitler in the last war, the people in Germany had been conditioned to believe that the Jews were the cause of all the problems and they were less than vermin. The Holocaust could never have happened if ordinary people had protested. Even the Jews walked passively to the gas chambers. They'd been so conditioned to their fate by the constant degrading humiliations. Propaganda is the mind drug of the one world order to anaesthetise us to their insidious plans. That's the end of the quote. Think about that. History tells us the future. Well, let's look at these conditions to renew our mind because we're going to need it in these last of the last days. So verse 2 says, don't be confirmed to this world. Don't be conformed, sorry, to this world. But be transformed, be changed by the renewing of your mind. If you think like the world and listen to the propaganda, you've not got the mind of Christ. You've got to get rid of all that conditioning and start to renew your mind. And we looked at 13 ways yesterday and now we're carrying on number 14. Oh, number 13, sorry. In honour, preferring one another. That's not easy. We, we all like to be the top dog, preferring one another. Number 14, not slothful in business. You know, God's order is to work six days and rest the seventh. 
The five-day working week isn't God's order. We're out of order. You're not supposed to rest two days. You're supposed to work six and rest one. That's what I do, and I'm going to carry on because I know that's the best way to live. It's the best way to be healthy and industrious. Well, you decide that that's God's order. But not slothful in business. Are you diligent at work? You know, people try and do the least work they can for the most money. But that's not Christian. That's not what God intended. If you wash your hands at 10 minutes to 5, when the boss pays you till 5, you're actually a thief. You're stealing his time. Why don't Christians be diligent and work till 5 o'clock and then wash their hands in their own time and show them that they're not penny pinching, they're not uh, after the pound of flesh? Christians should be different, you know. If Christians lived the Sermon on the Mount, they would get elevated because they would be industrious. Slothfulness is a terrible curse, and God hates slothfulness. Go to the ant now, slugger, he says. Well, number 15, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. You know, many Christians are saved, but they're serving themselves, they're serving their own agendas. Many pastors are serving their own agendas. They're trying to build their church, their ministry. Fervency. You know, fervent doesn't mean noisy and loud. You can be fervent and very quiet. It's the intensity of your spirit that makes you fervent, not your outward actions. You can be quiet and really fervent inside. Number 16, rejoicing in hope. Hope is for the things that we can't bring about by faith. By faith you can achieve things, by faith you can do things. But hope, you have no power to bring it about. The resurrection is a wonderful example, the blessed hope. We have no power. Faith won't bring the resurrection. Faith won't bring the return of Jesus. It's hope, and hope is stronger than faith. So rejoicing, we should be rejoicing in our hope that the redemption is nearer than when we first believed. Number 17, patient in tribulation. You know, this is hard when you're in pain and when you're going through things that you don't want to go through. Patience. Have you been impatient in this lockdown? Have you been frustrated? Well, God's watching every action and reaction, you know, to every event of your life. And this lockdown, God is watching to see if Christians have patience. 18. Continue an instant in prayer. That word instant, we think it means immediate. And it does in our modern language, but the old meaning of it, uh, to be instant, is to be urgent, to be pressing. So be urgent in prayer. That's a wonderful way of looking at it. Number 19, distributing to the necessity of saints. You know, I can't understand why Christians support rich ministries. What about the poor Christians around the world? There's Christians who are starving to death. There's Christians who are persecuted. And, and silly Christians in the West are sending money to millionaire evangelists and millionaire television evangelists. That's crazy. That's not sensible. That's not a good use of your money. That's not distributing to the necessity of the saints. Wow, how Christians are deceived. That's a new way to think. Think about where you give your money. You're going to have to give an account. Number 20, given to hospitality. You know, Christians should be hospitable. When was the last time you invited somebody to your house for a meal, a fellowship? You know, the early church met daily, it said they met daily, from house to house in fellowship, breaking of breads. We need to practice these things. Number 21, bless those that persecute you. Bless and curse not, this is Sermon on the Mount, isn't it? 22, rejoice with those that rejoice. You know, when people are successful... Don't begrudge it. It's easy to begrudge it. Why should he be a deacon? I've been at the church longer. Why is this and why that? Don't begrudge it. Enjoy their enjoyment. Rejoice with those that rejoice. And weep with those who weep. Be sensitive. You know, everyone's different. 
And, and you could think, what, they're making a fuss for? Why are they upset about that? Well, because they're not you. You wouldn't get upset about it. You'd get upset about something else. But we, with those who we be sensitive, have compassion for people, and understand that we're all so diverse. 24. Be of the same mind, one towards another. Aim for unity, not independence. Mind not high things. Don't think about high things, but condescend. Humble yourself to men of low estate. So come off your pedestal. We're all sinners. We're all of the same atom. Your old nature is not better than mine, or worse. It's a level playing field, so don't get on a pedestal as a Christian. Don't become self-righteous. You know, I can't stand self-righteous, humble Christians, could you? Let's humble ourselves. Let's not be wise in our own conceits. Proverbs twelve fifteen: The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkens unto counsel is wise. Proverbs 21, 2. Every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the heart. We, we all think we're right, don't we? We all, our doctrines are right. That's why we believe them. But let's be willing to condescend to men of low estate. Let's be willing to listen to people. 26. Recompense no man evil for evil. You know, the world say tit for tat. You owe me one. My mother used to say what's good for the goose is good for the gander. But what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. It's not tit for tat. We don't render evil for evil, do we? 27. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. I don't need to comment on that. 28. If it be possible, that means it's nearly impossible, but if it's possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Proverbs 15.1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. A lot of Christians are not at peace and it's their own silly fault because they don't know that a soft answer turns away wrath. So don't blame other people if you've not got peace when it's your fault. 29. Avenge not yourself. Don't seek revenge, but give place unto wrath. Be angry, but don't want vengeance. Vengeance is mine, I'll repay, saith the Lord. And therefore, because of that, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. And 30, and the last one, don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. So there's a list of 30 just in one chapter, 30 ways of thinking, of attitude, of disposition, uh, 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 ways of looking at things. Go through them slowly and start to renew your mind. You know, renewing your mind is brainwashing with consent. It, you only learn by repetition. You only change your thinking by repetition. Hearing something once, reading it once, won't change your mind. So go through them a few times. Listen to this vlog a few times and make some notes if you want and start to change. Do something practical. If you do what you've always done, you'll get the results you've always got. It's no point reading this and listening to me and saying, oh, that's wonderful, Morris, unless you actively do something to change your thinking. Well, I hope I've provoked you with that list. Uh, look forward. I can't say tomorrow. Joanna will, will be doing the lockdown tomorrow. So I'll, I'll see you in a couple of days. God bless you. Have a, a wonderful day.